Six little things we all hate, but we have to do if we work in an office. I'm Chris, this is the Office Survival Guide, where I do videos not just to give you the skills to survive the office week, but give you the skills to crush it. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about little things that people often overlook and say, I'm not going to do it because I hate it, but that cause a huge kerfuffle in the organization because people say, ah, I'm too good to do these things. So these are little, don't blow these things off. If you do these things well, you will seem you are like leaps and bounds above your peers, the ones that think they are too good to do these things. The first one is time sheets, time cards, whatever you call it. Pretty much every organization makes you log your time. Even for organizations that are salaried, often ask people to put in their time because they want to track you know, how many hours you've worked, how many hours of vacation you've taken, how many hours of sick leave you've taken, the different projects that you've worked on so they can figure out how to charge your time. There's a lot of people who often feel, look, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I'm that I don't have time to put in my time. But I will tell you, you do not want your boss to be chasing you around saying, hey, Chris, please put in your time. Because you know what? If you're in an organization that requires people to put in their time, your boss puts in their time too. If they can do it, so can you. The second little thing we all hate but we have to do is write status reports. You know, most people who work for a place or work for somebody, that somebody they work for is going to ask them, hey, what did you work on today? What did you work on this week? What did you work on this month? Please do not fight your boss on that. Please answer the question. Sometimes those status reports are in person. Sometimes you have to write them. Sometimes they're an email. Sometimes they're a Word document. Sometimes they're a PowerPoint. Whatever the status reporting requirement of your workplace is, make sure you just do it and turn it in on time. This is another one where you shouldn't make your boss chase you down to fill in your staff report. Why? Because generally, if you're putting in staff reports, that means your boss has to turn in staff reports about all the people that worked for them. And so if you're one of those people, your boss is going to chase you down for it. Or they might not, but they might just be recording in their head being like, look, I got status reports from everybody else, but I never get them from this person. So when it comes time for that end of year assessment and you're wondering why you didn't get your performance raise or bonus, maybe it's because you don't put in your time cards and you don't do your status reports. Number three is self-assessments. If you work for a large organization that has an annual performance review pay cycle, chances are they're going to ask you to write a self-assessment about how you think you did. And then your boss writes an assessment. They say, this is how I think you did. And then they decide how much money you get in salary increases and bonuses. And there are a lot of people who say, Chris, what? why do I need to write a self-assessment? Because my boss is just going to write that assessment anyway. Why do I need to write that about myself? Doesn't my boss know what I did? Well, you know what? If your boss is a good boss and you have a good rela relationship, then yes, they know what you did, but they often have to justify why they're giving you that performance increase. And wouldn't you want to help your boss out? Wouldn't you want to make it so that it's less work for your boss to give you more money? If that's the case, if you do and you want a good increase, then make sure to write that self-assessment. Because if you don't, your boss is gonna think a couple things. One, this person's not a team player. Two, this person doesn't care. Three, this person just doesn't get it. So if you have the option to write a self-assessment, and they often call it optional, but highly encouraged in organizations, I would say it is very, very highly encouraged wherever you work. And you know what? Even if you work for a place that doesn't require you to turn in self-assessments, I would recommend that you do it. I think it's worthwhile to write up once a year and just say, hey boss, even if you haven't asked for me, I just spent the last year kind of looking at the things I've done and uh, here they are, just in case this might be helpful for you for anything, right? And then your boss can look back at that and be like, wow, I didn't, I didn't even know Joe did all these things. Number four is documentation. And some people love documentation because they've got like an English degree and they love to write. But other people, often scientists and engineers and technicians, don't love to write. That's why they became engineers or technicians, so that they could do technical things, they could work with their hands, they could do math, and they don't have to write volumes and volumes of papers. But if you work in a large organization, I hate to tell you, 
you have to document what you did, why you did it, how you're going to do it, so that other people can understand what you're doing. The nature of an organization is that we just can't get everybody in the same room to talk about things and we have to share things in writing. So when your boss asks you to document something, don't give them a hard time. Just do your best. And even if you say, well, hey boss, I'm not really that good at writing. If your boss asks you to do it, take your best stab at it. Number five is expense reports. This is one a lot of people hate to do because they say, I'm not a finance person. I was hired to be doctor, lawyer, engineer. Why do I need to deal with money? Well, you know what? Money makes the world go round. If you buy something and it's small and you want to get your money back for it, you need to do an expense report. If you went on travel and you want to get paid for going on travel for work, you need to do an expense report. So when you go and say, hey, can I get reimbursed for this thing? And they say, yeah. Just fill out an expense report. Don't give them a hard time. Make it easy so that the company can give you that money for that thing that you did that you're asking money for. And the sixth thing that a lot of people hate, not everybody has to do this, but when you get to a certain level of your company is budget tracking. You know what? Money makes the world go round. That expense reports I talked about, that's usually for an individual thing. Budget tracking is tracking all the money that's been associated to a particular project or a particular task or a particular department. And you know what? There's a lot of people who say, ah, I don't need to track the money. Somebody else should do that, but money, it's what makes organizations and companies work, right? We are all there fundamentally to generate a certain amount of revenue so that this company or organization can stay around. So making sure we track the budget, spend it wisely, and don't spend too much so that we don't run out of it before more comes in is really important. You know what, but there might be more things in your organization that you have complaints about. In that case, if you wanna to complain to your boss, you might enjoy watching my video right here about how to have your complaints heard. You know what, if you've got a lot of boring meetings, that's another one that a lot of us hate to attend, but I've got some tips for you on how to stay awake in boring meetings you can click here here find links in the description i won't say goodbye because i'll see you in one of those videos